So I've, I keep hearing this same sentiment for the entire time that I've been doing this channel and beyond that. And if you type in the just the word fruit, you, you get huge amounts of topics on how bad fruit sugar is. And if you look at people who used to eat fruit or don't like fruit or whatever, they always talk about this idea that hybridized fruit has more sugar in it than its predecessors, the original fruit. And I, I just don't think that's true at all. You know, one of the things that I've noticed over the last, I don't know, since I've been doing this since two, 2011, I believe it is, is that the fruit doesn't taste as good as it used to. When a fruit is ripe or when a fruit has a lot of sugar in it, it's a lot softer. The sugar is softer and bitter is harder. The one is gonna be a whole lot easier to ship and store, you know, you know, put on a stand in a store than the other. So I, I really, I, I don't really believe in this higher sugar. I wanted to look into that and here we go. The ripeness doesn't affect a fruit's calorie count. It does affect the amount of sugar it contains. The more ripe a fruit is, the more concentrated the sugars become. Bottom line is snacking on super sweet fruit raises your insulin levels, which will cause you to be hungry again more quickly. Now this ends off by talking about how much insulin that you need in your body, and that really just isn't true. Fructose and sucrose really don't need any sugar at, or sorry, insulin at all to be moved into the cells. So why why is this statement being made? You know, if you look at the breakdown of a of piece of fruit, it's mostly fructose and it's mo mostly sucrose and there's a little bit of glucose. Now, that reverses if you have an unripe fruit and that's why a lot of people uh, have issues digesting fruit that isn't ripe. I also wanted to read from this book here. So this is Neil Barnard. He talks a lot about fruit in this. He talks a lot about how you don't really need much insulin to digest fruit and as you might guess a banana yields its fruit faster as it ripens and in general the more the more you cook a food such as pasta or rice the more quickly it releases uh, its sugars this explains the remarkable weight loss often seen in, in, in people who consume large amounts of raw foods melons cantaloupes uh, cucumbers carrots apples oranges these foods may contain uh, contain substantial amounts of natural sugars but they re release gradually or you know, only gradually. So they actually are supposed to keep you full longer. Now, I know a lot of people talk about this, especially in the, my comment section, how if they tried raw, they're always hungry. Now, I don't know how much these people are eating because when I eat, like yesterday, I ate uh, 13 bananas, regular bananas, I think 10 Thai bananas, and four mango, and that held me over for my entire day until dinner. And my dinner was until 10 o'clock at night because I was out, uh, on the islands and that's way way out there and i didn't want to eat anything there because it's 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 as far from vegan as humanly possible and this held me from 7 30 in the morning till 10 o'clock at night and i don't really think that's a ton of food and that's what held me the entire day and then i had a little bit of pasta and i went to bed so these people who talk about you know fruit doesn't hold them over I don't know. I don't, you know, a lot of people eat one banana and like two apples and then they call that, they think that's a meal. I, I'm like, uh, that's nothing. So you've got to eat more. I, I don't understand this sentiment. And then I wrote down here, so some, some uh, fruit that is fairly common that's high in fructose is apples, bananas, mangoes, figs, grapes, pears, pineapples, watermelons, jackfruit's the one that you're not going to see as much, and then cherries. Okay, so those are the ones that you're going to see the most commonly. Other than jackfruit, if you have an Asian store, then you'll see jackfruit. Also, cherimoyas are, are high in it. If you have a uh, Asian market, sometimes a Spanish market, you'll see uh, cherimoyas, you know, you'll see them. So in, in closing of this little statement that I'm making here, Sucrose and fructose don't need insulin to be pushed into the cells. They just get pushed into the cells. They just get absorbed into the cells. It's only glucose that needs to be uh, used insulin to get pushed into the, ce the cells. And incidentally, a lot if you're eating a whole lot of protein, a lot of that protein is being converted into glucose. And that actually raises the insulin more than if you had fruit. 
So, you know, take that with what you will. And again, the, the shipping on this stuff. So if you think, if you've had a Cherimoya, they look like they're gonna be really hard, right? Cause of that almost scaly like skin that they've got on the outside, but they're not. They're not, as soon as they're ripe, they are as soft as, as it gets. And the sugar content of those things is, is insane. Like if you've ever had a cherimoya, those generally become people's favorite fruit that they've ever had. Uh, other than people who really like durian, uh, there's a really cult, cultish like uh following for jackfruit and a couple other fruits now the other thing is is if you think of uh like fruit when it's not ripe it's a lot harder and one of the things that people not people but like farmers and growers and buyers are looking for is to actually have what they're buying and producing make it to your doorstep or to the you know grocery store intact right so select fruits that are sturdy enough to endure ship shipping those with hard skins apples pears citrus apricots and cherries are good travelers softer fruits plums and peaches will only arrive safely with extra packaging and careful handling avoid berries and other fat fragile fruits and if you think about like a green apple is really easy to ship because it's, it's it's bitter you know these different a lot of these different apples they uh, over the years people don't eat these things raw they cook them for some like an apple pie or a you know like a, a cobbler or something like that they'll cook these things because they're just not that good you know by themselves and when you cook it you release the sugars more you break some of those bonds and it's a lot more simple sugar and it's a lot tastier so really think about that and, and think about how much harder those things are and how much better that's going to ship than a, like say a cherimoya or like a ripe banana can you imagine shipping a ripe banana or even persimmons uh, for example like you cannot ship like hachia when those things are ripe you can't ship those things they're they're like water balloons i i, I had a uh, um, I, the first time I was trying those things, I was at this Asian, Asian market and I, I, I went to the woman who worked there. She was uh, Japanese. And I said, how do you know when these things are ripe? And she's like, they feel like a boob, you know, like, so those things don't ship well at, you know, when they're ripe. Key enzymes involved in fruit ripen ripening are amylase and uh, pectinase. Amylase breaks down starch to produce simple sugars, so it is responsible for increasing sweetness of ripening fruit. Pectinase uh, breaks down pectin and so, uh, substances that keep fruits hard, so it's responsible for increasing the softness of ripening fruit. Now, if you have a lot of this uh, pectinase in the fruit and it's ripe, it's not going to ship well. So think about this, like there's not, they're not going to hybridize these things that have more sugar because they don't ship as good. It, it, it doesn't make any sense. So back about 10 years ago, I, I, I think, I think it was about 10 years ago, my dad decided to grow heirloom tomatoes. And one of the reasons I'm actually making this video is because of what happened with these heirloom tomatoes. So I was talking to him about these heirloom tomatoes and he's like, I, I can't keep these pests away from these things. They're always going after them. And he had rows and rows and rows and rows, like, I don't know, 20, 30 rows of hybrid uh, tomatoes and then he had I don't know I think like five rows of heirloom tomatoes they weren't touching these hybridized ones at all they were going after the heirloom one and he for whatever reason did have a Briggs test which is a Briggs is usually most commonly used for wine to see if the the grapes are, are sugary enough to make wine from and they can also be used to test the grass of grain so if you test the grass of grain if it has enough sugar in it then you know that the grain is going to be good we happened to use this for these tomatoes and the sugar was four or five times higher I think it, it was a Briggs of like 25 to 26 or something like that comparatively to like six or seven with these hybridized tomatoes and they were they were planted at the same time they both had the same ripeness but these heirloom tomatoes had way more sugar and now a lot of like an like a cherimoya is is an heirloom fruit like there's a lot of other fruits that can be found heirloom and i think that the definition of that is a seed is like 40 it's either 40 or 50 years old or older
So this goes back to what I was talking about at the beginning of the video. Heirloom varieties aren't usually as productive as hybrids, and as a result, heirloom plants concentrate more sugars in fewer tomatoes, whereas hybrid plants dilute a, a similar amount of uh, fruit uh, of sugar in more fruit. Now, this doesn't just apply to heirloom tomatoes. This applies to any fruit that you can find the original seed for. It's going to be the same thing across the board. If you think of a chero moya, for example, chero moyas are extremely sugary, extremely sweet, and they have a ton of seeds in it. And I don't think they're they're hybrid. Now there is a hybrid version of chero moyas, but chero moyas themselves, I believe, are original fruit. And here's the alternate, not the alternate, the hybrid version of the chero moya to at moya. And I guess it's, it's that way so it can grow in tropical areas. I didn't actually know that. <laughs> that's, that's kind of surprising to me. So these fruits back in the day had a lot more sugar in them than uh, fruits, no matter what it is, whether it's a tomato, banana, whatever it is, than they do now. I've been to this festival in eastern Pennsylvania. Uh, just I think it's in Kutztown or just outside of Kutztown and they have like these crazy uh, uh, different varieties of apples now this isn't that that place but at one weekend every September at least when I was living out that way they would have this come pick it yourself and take it but it was only lasted for a weekend and they completely sold out now they didn't have all these varieties but one thing that I noticed was majority of the apples that they did have which were apples that you're not going to find in the grocery store were very soft and they don't ship well and this is why we don't see a lot of these varieties i can just scroll through here and you can see i mean there's thousands and thousands and thousands of not not on this page but just in in general there's thousands of just different apples there's probably hundreds of different kinds of bananas and the reason we don't see them in the store is because they've got so much sugar in them that they're very soft and they don't ship well. And this is, you know, one of the issues. So that just proves to me that they're not adding more sugar into these hybridized fruit. They're making them easier to ship because they don't want to have as much waste. It's just a simple matter of economics. It's not a matter of health at all. So here's hybrid. Um, I typed in, I forget what exactly I typed in, but plant breeding is common across species with the aim, for example, increasing nutrient concentrations and some unique secondary metabolites of prolonging the shelf life. See, here's the, here's the key. Prolonging the shelf life of cut fruits, vegetables, and flowers, improving yield uh, potential and increasing tolerance to abi abiotic stresses and resistance to scr uh, scourges and plant diseases. Th this Nowhere in here does it mention that they're doing this to increase the sugar content of a certain fruit. It's, it's That's not what it is. They want the most off of a plant. They want the most resistance off, off a plant, a resistant fruit off of a plant. And they also want something that they can ship well and don't lose a lot of. So as you can see, some of the, a lot of the stuff I've shown you, and I could have gone into further detail. If there's a lot of interest in this, maybe I will make a, a, a video that's in further detail uh, to some of this. You know, obviously leave your questions, comments, whatever down below. But as you can see, the, the sugar has not been raised in these things at all. It has not been raised. This is a pure matter of how, how much can we ship, how much waste can we have, and utilizing this supposedly poor soil that we have now i don't know if i buy into that largely because i used to work in some of the post offices in different areas and uh, like farming communities and every single one of those farmers was always mailing off samples of soil to either Penn State or Ohio State to be tested to see what was in the soil so they could add it back in. I, I don't really know if I buy into, because a lot of plants won't grow at all if the, the minerals aren't in the soil. So I don't know. I, I don't know if I really buy into the, the depleted soil thing, largely because A, I saw them mailing off all of their samples and B, like you try growing uh, anything in soil that doesn't have a lot of nutrients in it, the yield is going to be so low. And what you do get is going to be very diseased, is going to have a lot of pests after it. So I, I really don't know if I buy into 
this idea that the soil is really depleted. I just don't. Studies conducted to date have proven that phytochemical and organoleptic characteristics of uh, interspecific <laughs> it says hybrids may be better compared to uh, parental uh, species whose fruits generally have an increased content of simple sugars. In analysis with the hybrids of pomelo and oro blanco, a hybrid of pomelo, the latter was demonstrated to have a sweeter flavor with smaller amounts of simple sugars. So that just completely destroys what they are saying uh, that fruits these days have more sugars. Being healthier for diabetics so that the hybridization process not only enhances the taste properties, but also led to uh, reduction in the sugar content of Oro Blanco fruit when compared to its parent fruit, the pomelo. In closing, I mean, honestly, this really goes back to when I first got into vegan, I went raw vegan and I was buying a lot of fruit and it tasted so much better than it does these days. Now, the one, if you're in America and you have a Whole Foods, they're, what, what is it called? They're, they're actual bananas, not Dole or whatever other brand. If they, if it just says Whole Foods on it, their brand bananas are really good. So I don't know, maybe they're some kind of heirloom version. I don't know. Their bananas are really good. Um, Sometimes the, uh, the Thai bananas are really good. It really, it really depends. But I have noticed that of all bananas and of all fruit, the mangoes are still really good and the bananas are still really good uh, if you get them from Whole Foods. And, then, and the mangoes that I like is the, uh, is it a top, I, it's the, the yellow ones, I think a top five, I forget. They're in season right now. Those are the ones I like. But if you, I mean, really, if you look at this and if you want me to make more about this, the sugar content of the, the fruit is way lower than it used to be, way lower. Think about a date. A date is about as heirloom as it gets, right? And those things are extremely high in sugar. And that's how most of the fruit used to be. When I was growing up, my, my mom used to tell you, uh, to, to tell us like, you know, we wanted a snack and there's, and, you know, like there's apples or there's a banana, you know, like go have that. And if you were actually hungry enough, you weren't just like trying to get food to get food because you're, you know, bored. If you were actually hungry enough, one apple would hold you over. Now you've got to eat like an entire bag of apples to have the same effect that one apple used to have back when I was growing up in the 80s. I, I just, I cannot buy into this. There's more sugar in uh, fruit nowadays than there used to be because I've had fruit from 40 years ago, not like recently, but I had fruit from 40 years ago. And technically, if you have heirloom tomatoes, you are having fruit from more than 40 years ago because it's heirloom and the reason it's more expensive is because the pests are going to go after those because there's a lot of sugar in them there's a lot of sugar in those things comparatively to its counterpart so if you're growing an heirloom anything next to a hybridized version everything's going to go after the heirloom version of it it's just the way it is that is the video there's just no way and another thing that i was seeing before i close this video I could not believe how many things I comments I saw of is fruit worse for you than like Coca-Cola. I'm like, what is going on? Is fruit worse for you than candy? I could not believe some of the comments. If I, I if I take video of it, I'll put it uh, here while I'm talking. If not, just go just for fun, like type in fruit sugar. It's the neuroticness that is coming from this. I, I guess maybe the news channels are reporting on this. I have no idea what's going on with this. But to, for somebody to ask is fruit sugar worse than like Smarty or, or whatever kind of candy, I mean, come on. I, I, I don't know what's going on these days, but it's, it's just crazy. Anyways, that is the video. Do what you want with it. Uh, share the video if you think it'll help somebody out. It really helps the channel out. Like and subscribe, uh, that helps the channel out as well. But if you want me to dive deeper into this, I probably can. Now, some of this stuff is really hard to find. Uh, but I probably could dive a little deeper. Anyways, talk to you in the next one.